Good, perfect. So welcome to V-Ray Day here in New York City at the Center of Architecture. Um, interesting little note that it's especially a great idea to have it here at the Center of Architecture because today is actually Franklin Lloyd Wright's birthday. So June 8th, 1867, I believe. Um, my name is Stephen Costa. I'm the technical di director of technical services for Microsoft Resources. My job is to make sure that uh, I help our clients learn about as much about technology uh, and how they can integrate it at their firms to further develop their design process. And with me, I have a host of uh, other members from Microsoft Resources. Um, in particular, I'd like to single out Annalisa, Miriam, and Tara, who helped put this together with Chaos Group today. Quick agenda for uh, today's event. Uh, we're going to have five main sections broken up into individual aspects of V-Ray. So for the first session, we're going to have a V-Ray for Revit conversation. For the second one, we're going to be discussing the order and beauty of design visualization for SketchUp and Rhino. Then we're going to have a quick sneak peek of the Clever beta. Clever is an interactive design visualization platform. And then uh, fourth, we're going to have a V-Ray for 3ds Max session, uh, delivering the best work with the world-class rendering. And then last but not least, uh, we're going to have a guest presentation by Scott DeWoody of Gensler. Just a little bit about who we are at Microsoft Resources. Uh, we are a AEC-based Autodesk reseller, but we also partner with a number of other vendors, vendors like Chaos Group. Um, we've been in the business for about 30 years. Bear with me. We've been in the business for over 30 years uh, with a main focus in architecture, engineering, and I think what keeps happening <laughs> is I keep pressing the... There we go. So we're, we've been in business for 30 years, um, mainly focusing on architecture, engineering, and construction. Design visualization is a very interesting... I'm, I'm sorry for the uh, auto scroll, but I'll talk a little bit about just some of our partners. Um, aside from Chaos Group, who we've partnered with and who's presenting today, um, we partner with a number of other uh, firms, Autodesk, McNeil, which produces Rhino, uh, Panzura, um, a number of other vendors that really uh, help define how the AEC industry works and how the visualization experts within those firms work. Um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the uh, upcoming webinars we have that you may be of interest in checking out. Um, we have a number of webinars ranging from discussions on the 2030 challenge for um, uh, using Autodesk Insight for... Uh, I'm drawing a blank right now, sorry. Um, a couple of other things for uh, subscription business models, right? Autodesk is shifting the way that they handle their business from maintenance to subscription. Um, what's new with Navisworks 2018, that's going to be something that allow, allows uh, architect engineers and construction industry to uh, work a little bit more uh, closely with the construction firms that they um, team with. And then last but not least, uh, two related to BIM 360 and BIM in the era of connection. Now, as a quick reminder, uh, there is a special offer for V-Ray licenses for those of you who have attended today. So please feel free to reach out to our sales team, our marketing team, or even myself, and we can share a little bit about that with you. Um, I believe that there will be an email that goes out to everybody involved uh, in this webinar um, or this session that will allow you to uh, take advantage of that um, promotion. And so it's with great pleasure uh, that I introduce Corey Rebidou from Vice President of the AEC Design for Chaos Group. Thank you. Super, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us uh, to uh, V-Ray Days in New York City. Um, I'll keep a high-level view here. I only have 10 minutes uh, to talk to everybody. But um, uh, Chaos Group, uh, if you guys and folks don't know, um, we've been around for quite a while, right? Um, almost 20 years now. and. Um, we've been solidly dedicated to uh, the artist, let's say, uh, productivity and, and lifestyle 
and uh, 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 production pipelines for a long, long time. Architects, engineers, uh, VFX market, automotive design, all over the place. And um, over over this um, last several years, um, we've grown quite a bit, and uh, we have right now uh, 250 plus employees that work for the Chaos Group uh, across uh, headquarters in Sofia. Uh, we have offices in, in Baltimore, LA, uh, Korea, Japan, um, and a few other satellite offices. So um, in 20 years, we've gone from two people uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a room to 250 people, and we have what I think is one of the most uh, uh, dedicated group of uh, people working on ray tracing in, in, in our industries. <clears throat> um, just a kind of a short roll of, of accolades, if you will, or some of our important customers um, in architecture. Um, we have 90, roughly 92 of the top 100 firms in the country are using V-Ray at some level, somewhere. Um, and, uh, and then on top of that, you have uh, all the visualizations, let's say architectural specialists, if you will, or, or folks that make their living and build a business on, on actually visual production for, in case, in case some, uh, in some cases, sorry, they're, they're actually doing work for these same customers. So V-Ray has this amazing, uh, let's say, a, a lifespan in between just design all the way to s some major uh, final renderings and animations and so on for, for large um, projects. Uh, I am vice president of uh, our AEC and design division. I'm solidly focused on architecture, engineering, construction, and industrial design and how uh, our technologies relate uh, to, um, to those industries. Um, I can tell you personally, uh, I'm, I practice architecture, I um, love design. Uh, I see myself and our group, in many cases, as a, an extension of your teams, uh, whether it's a design team or a visualization specialist team. We get as engaged with you guys and folks as we, as we possibly can to build our products to be um, faster, better, uh, more versatile and scalable and so on and so forth. Um, in, our, in our AEC and design portfolio, if you will, of products, um, our most recent uh, product on the market is obviously V-Ray for Revit, uh, which shipped last uh, year, uh, late last year. And uh, V-Ray for SketchUp and Rhino that have been around for, for quite a while. So at the end of the day, um, most of our customers, if you will, in the AEC space, typically balance between these uh, these three products and then also into, say, some of the more uh, sophisticated packages that we have. So this is our current portfolio of products across the company. Um, V-Ray for Max all the way to uh, V-Ray Standalone and, and V-Ray for Blender. And uh, we have um, even more products in the portfolio that are, be, that are being built as we speak. <clears throat> the core mission for for our division, uh, if you will, and, and probably uh, for other parts of the company, is um, essentially these three three um, key points: uh, easy, powerful, and fast. Um, the idea of um, making high quality visualization easily uh, easy and accessible to uh, not just one person or two people or four people in a firm, but to, to spread this level of, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, quality across the entire company. So as we see, let's say, uh, Photoshop on every designer's workstation, at the end of the day, um, you know, we see V-Ray being as integral to uh, anyone's workstation as, as, uh, as Photoshop is, for instance. The last three years, uh, two and a half years or so, um, we spent a enormous amount of time uh, reimagining, uh, trying to uh, build a brand new user experience for, for our products. 
Um, right now, the, the, essentially, the spearheads uh, are V-Ray for Rhino and V-Ray for SketchUp. Um, their UIs have been completely overhauled, um, focusing on, again, ease of use, accessibility, scalability, all this good stuff, and giving people um, at every level and every company the power of V-Ray. Um, now there's just kind of a simple example of uh, uh, our material library and our, our approach to materials and the user experience with regards to that. Um, simple case here is uh, us building into uh, uh, in, uh, sorry, Windows Explorer um, thumbnails that are actually updatable in real time and drag and droppable into our applications and so on and so forth. But even at the Windows level, the operating system level now, we have um, uh, addressed some ease of use concerns. Uh, fast, uh, V-Ray's always had a reputation for being pretty fast uh, ray tracer in the industry, and it's one of the reasons why it's taken so much hold in, in architecture and design. Um, our, our commitment to speed is, is uh, higher than ever probably. Our investment uh, that we're making inside uh, computing technologies, computing processing, all that good stuff. So uh, CPU versus GPU, hybrid rendering, there's all kinds of um, investigations and research that we're doing to, to, to bring more uh, higher quality images, larger uh, image productions, and so on and so forth at a much faster rate. So um, then, then we have um, what's a kind of an evolution of our distri distributed rendering technology um, that's part of Rhino, uh, Revit, and SketchUp right now. And, and we have plans to, to probably give this a further reach in our portfolio overall, but um, taking distributed rendering that um, in some cases is uh, a little bit inaccessible, for instance, for people to install uh, the, the, the spawner services or the, the uh, slave computer services and so on and check the IPs and all that stuff, we've taken and automated as much as we possibly can. Uh, and then also reimagine that every office has um, a lot of computing power just sitting around their offices, for instance. And we try to kind of uh, embrace the idea of, say, for instance, using, using anyone's computing power anywhere at any time, especially if it's not being used. So the idea of, of having your own internal, let's say, on-premise cloud solution um, as a uh, term, let's say, um, Swarm is something that allows you to get there. Um, we're we're building on it. It's a little. It's you know. It's in its first iteration. But uh, even as far as DR distributed rendering goes for SketchUp and Rhino and Revit, it's definitely um, uh, uh, the investment of time that we've put into it is showing some some great um, results at the moment. Uh, powerful. Um, for years, we've we've um, developed. Our, in each individual product kind of in its own uh, kind of uh, space, if you will. Um, Rhino development was its own pipeline, and the engineers were their own engine, you know, on their own. So there was some, op some uh, overlap in between the product developments, but um, right now we have um, an amazing technology that we put out. It was actually launched last week. Um, called our application SDK, which basically is uh, the new backbone for uh, Revit, SketchUp, and Rhino. Uh, behind the scenes, we have the power of this application SDK that we're tying into. And it's allowed us to kind of somewhat democratize some of the, the core technologies that V-Ray has um, uh, that we can just almost in some ways get for free when we start building the the, or uh, yeah, building or evolving the products that we're making so Rhino, Revit, SketchUp can get all the features that we're seeing in, in Max 3.5 or 3.6 down the road. We're, we're getting closer to what, what I say is this, uh, version parity. 
So right now, um, it's one of the first times in, in the company's history where we have a V-Ray 3.X uh, collection of products. So Rhino, uh, SketchUp, Revit, all, and Max, we're all on 3.X core or V-Ray, let's say. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll build our plugins much, much faster. Um, our iterations for getting service releases out will be much faster. Uh, we'll look at shorter, um, uh, larger product de development releases um, uh, as we move forward. It's not going to be four years in between product releases anymore. It's going to be hopefully, you know, I'll say four months. Nah, that's not right, but um, at least 12 months or so. Something where we, we have... Uh, a, a lot more iterative um, development and speed to the market with our products. Um, and then uh, just another another technology that I just wanted to, to mention um, as far as bringing power to our products. Um, we've invested a lot of time and energy and resources and engineering into our um, V-Ray scans technology, for instance. Um, it's just... Um, it's... Uh, at the moment, it's a service. Um, we are able to take um, any material samples and, and essentially make uh, hyper photorealistic materials that are essentially set it and forget it type materials. We, you don't have to customize or build a shader or whatever. It's really just a file, attach it to your, your geometry and, and go. Um, and it's super spectacular results that we're getting um, for sure. There are also some some pitfalls with it now, but we're working on solving some of those some of those issues, like with transparent materials, for instance. It's not something we're actually um, uh, we haven't solved that problem yet. Um, and then the last thing I kind of want to touch on a bit, um, it's something that um, is really, at least from my perspective, uh, one of the. Um, next major steps for us as a, as a company. Uh, and the interface is kind of a, the genesis in a way of, of what I'm about to talk about. And what I mean by that is that um, our interface that we have in Rhino and SketchUp, parts of it in Revit, and it'll get, de get there further down the road. Essentially, the interface for V-Ray should be a, very similar, if not exactly the same across all of our applications. So once you see V-Ray, you know V-Ray. Imagine a uh, situation where V-Ray itself actually knows where, it's, where you are. If you're in Max, maybe V-Ray knows where you're, where you're at at any given time. So, or switch to, to Rhino real quick or back to SketchUp or something. If V-Ray understands your context, for instance, um, it save you a couple clicks, right, from starting up the rendering engine and getting a license and all that stuff. So, just an idea. I'm not making promises. I'm just telling you that that from you know we're trying to make V-Ray as as intelligent as we possibly can. Um, so, just a just a quick screenshot of this uh, Barcelona Pavilion in, in Revit. Um, uh, there's a export feature in here. Uh, you can export the V-Ray uh, files as a V-Ray scene file. And, and then uh, with some small limitations, uh, I would say, um, you can import that VR scene file from Rhino, uh, actually Rhino, Revit, or SketchUp directly into 3 Studio Max through a new tool that we have in there. And in this case, uh, you, you will have to add some lights and probably reset up your cameras right now. This is kind of a downfall of it, but you get the geometry, you get the materials, um, and if you want to do more advanced visualization, um, animation, VR, whatever, um, not that you can't do some of that stuff in Rhino or SketchUp, um, but someone can, can actually hand, get handed off of this VR scene file from any of these applications, and you can begin to actually aggregate VRA scenes for, across the applications inside of Max. Um, so imagine building uh, uh, a site model in SketchUp and building your Revit model, and then someone's working on some pieces, uh, interior components in SketchUp, for instance, and be able to actually just do a mashup of all this project inside of Max. Or 
imagine it being mashed up in SketchUp or Revit. Um, so these, this is kind of the ecosystem next step kind of thoughts at where we're going and what we're trying to uh, achieve, if you will. Um, and we're, again, there's steps that are made there. Um, in fact, if you brought this scene into Maya, actually, you, you get you get all, you get the lights and and so on and so forth. So it's almost apples to apples. What you see, what you've rendered in Revit, is um, is what you'll see in Maya when you hit render. Uh, so last but not least, I mean, imagine a world where um, where V-Ray is the center of your visualization universe, if you will, right? Um, where Revit, Max, SketchUp. Rhino, all these applications that we use on a day-to-day -day basis to get our designs out the door and to our customers and approved and eventually built, um, that, that, that there's a tool there, a platform that um, can take your ideas uh, and bring them to a, a consistent place all the time on quality, speed, what you see is what you've designed and not necessarily some uh, uh, other representation of it, so to speak, um, but um, that's uh, that's our vision. That's where I see our our AEC and design uh, uh, department kind of pushing and heading, so that uh, we can we can build this bridge, we can build this ecosystem um, to to just bring uh, your ideas and your products and and processes to uh, to. Uh, a little a little more level of refinement and in, in working and how you work to higher level of quality of, of imagery and and uh, and output so thank you um, I'm going to introduce uh, Brian Russell uh, Brian is our uh, business development manager he's based in the Baltimore office uh, with me uh, and a few others um, Brian um, comes to us from uh, a firm in Baltimore called Air St. Gross Architects and Planners. He's been with us. Uh, actually, he's been working with me since 2000 on different projects here and there. Um, Brian's last role uh, at Air St. Gross was integrated practice manager there. Uh, so he's rolled out um, Revit and visualization platforms and all kinds of other tools across Air, Air St. Gross, which is a multidisciplinary firm from landscape to architecture to master planning, interior department, so on and so forth. So um, Brian joined us uh, three years ago, and uh, I hired him back to help us really try to wrap our heads around the V-Ray for Rabbit product. And so John, um, Brian joined us as a product manager for, for V-Ray for Revit initially, and he's still kind of slightly in transition uh, in the company. But uh, I'm going to just turn this over to him and let him uh, give you all an overview of, of what we have cooking inside of V-Ray for Revit and really why it's, you know, what we, what we believe is um, hopefully an integral part of, of all your processes. So thank you.